Hello everybody, Mrs. Hales here with day two of our underwater scene illustrations. Today we're gonna to be adding color. You can really use anything that you want um, to do this to add color to this project. If you wanna paint everything, you can. If you're gonna do that, I would probably um, paint the background first. So paint the water and the sky, if you can see it, and the sand, and then I would move forward and paint the smaller objects. Um, if you want to use oil pastels, I would do that first and then, or crayons, and then paint the background. Um, if you want to use colored pencils, I would probably do the colored pencil part first and then do the watercolor painting in the background because then it can dry when your class is over. Um, so if you have um, any fluorescent crayons or if you have fluorescent tempera sticks or oil pastels, those look really cool in this project. Uh, a lot of people don't have those, so I didn't list that as a supply that you had to have for today. But um, the rest of the supplies you need are water cup, watercolor, paint, and a paintbrush. Um, so today is the day that we are gonna finish these up and add some color. Remember, um, this project was inspired by Eugenia Clark, also known as the Shark Lady, who is a pretty famous female scientist um, who died a few years ago, who really was a pioneer in um, helping us understand more about shark behavior and how sharks live and how they learn. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I colored my dolphin gray and I put a dark greenish color underneath him or her and then on her flippers and her belly and kind of up to the bottom of her chin. And then I put a little bit of white as a highlight on the top of her body or his body. Um, you don't have to use dark green. You could use dark blue or you could lightly blend teeny tiny little like feathery strokes of black in with the gray. Or you could make your dolphin pink. You can make your animals look however you want them to look. Um, and then when I colored my seat, I kept mine more realistic. And I did the same thing with my sea turtle. I kept um, his or her coloration um, a little bit more realistic. So they have usually like a yellow or a creamy color shell underneath. Some of that color is often on the top, but then the top shell is usually a little bit darker. And then their skin and their flippers um, are even a different color. So um, I wanted to have her look a little bit realistic. But I also wanted her to look like she has form and like she's real. So I wanted to give them um, shadows and highlights. So I used a lot of earthy colors um, on my sea turtle, like greens and um, more muted tones, um, more than the bright colors in my oil pastel container. By the way, I'm using oil pastels. Even if you're using crayons or colored pencils, remember you can layer them to blend the colors and um, to create a more, just a more a smooth transition or more realistic looking animals. You can have some bubbles underwater. You can have however many different kinds of plants you wanna put in there. Um, I just worked from top to bottom on my picture because I thought I would be less likely to smear. Um, I probably should have worked left to right down here where there are, are all these um, different elements in my composition, but because I have that space between the jellyfish and the green plant I'm drawing now, I think I'll be okay. I don't think my hand will smear any of my plants, but remember you can always put a piece of scrap paper under your hand if you're right-handed when you're drawing. I also wanted to use lots of different greens in my picture. So um, that is a good opportunity for you if you don't have a bunch of different greens in your oil pastel or your crayon set, that's a good opportunity for you to layer colors in order to blend them and to create new colors. I didn't film myself painting these because you know how that works. We've done this a bunch of times. Um, I did try to go around the elements in my picture with the watercolor paint because I didn't want the oil pastels to smear. And the other thing I wanted to show you was right here where there are yellow stripes. Um, 
I left that part of the paper white when I painted because I knew I wanted to put the sun's rays coming through the water. So I didn't think I would be successful putting yellow over blue paint because I'm not patient enough for to wait for my paint to dry sometimes. So I just left some of those ray areas white and then once the blue paint had dried a little bit and I knew it wouldn't yellow wouldn't bleed into the blue, then I went in there and painted those little stripes yellow. Okay. Um, that's all I've got for you today, other than to review with you the art elements that we use today. All right. We definitely used line and shape. We used space because we brainstormed our compositions. We used color. Um, if you added a highlight or a shadow on anything, it is possible that you used value. We definitely, hopefully you used texture. Um, you probably didn't use form, although you could have tried to create form if you, um, by using value to make something look like it's round or like it's real. Yeah, yes. Okay, everybody, I hope you love these underwater um, illustrations. I like to save this for the spring, the end of the school year. I don't know why, because I like to go to the beach maybe. And I love to think about all the little creatures that are swimming around underneath me when I'm paddling around in the ocean. All right, everybody, um, I will see you next class. We have one more class together, some of us. <laughs>